See, as we move from one body to the next, as the subtle body takes on another gross body, as in common understanding as we take birth, the occasion of our birth, the location of our birth, the parentage that we have, the genes we acquire, all of them are the result of the impressions we carry with us from the previous life. Shariram yadavapnoti yachapya utkramatishwara grihit vaitani saunyati vayur gandhani vashet. How the soul leaves the body and moves on to the next carrying with it the impressions of the previous life, carrying with it the subtle body, carrying with it the mind, intelligence and ego, carrying with it its bundle of karmas, carrying with it its bundle of impressions of the previous life, which are known as sanskaras, which impel the subtle body and the soul towards the womb, Depend, depending upon what impressions it has gathered in its previous life. If one has performed pious deeds in the previous life, one gets a pious birth. If one has engaged in sinful deeds in the past life, then one gets a, a birth that is according to his actions. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Asuram yoni mapanam mudo janmani janmani. So, birth after birth, those who live asuric lives, those who live godless lives, those who live lives without acknowledging God, they are born in lower and lower wombs. So we must understand that our constitution is really not the subtle body. Our constitution is essentially the soul. But no doubt, when we leave one gross body made of flesh and blood, bhumi upon alo vayur, come, we carry with us the subtle body, mano buddhira hankar. But actually, we are a pariyam itastvanyam prakritim vidime param jiva bhuta mahabhao yayedam dharyate jagat. The opportunity that we have birth after birth is the opportunity to remember God and forget self. And by remembering God and forgetting the sense of self, we learn to understand and experience that all things are but part of God. They are in him and they are his. And thus, by remembering God in a manner so that we extinguish, annihilate, transcend the sense of self or the ego, we attain peace of mind, perfection, and at the time of death, leaving behind the gross and subtle body, we move to the final destination. But even for that enlightenment to come to us, we need to have a subtle body that has been purified. We need to have a subtle body that is at least in sattvic mode. Because if we are in sattvic mode, then knowledge can actually dawn on us. When our prakriti has become purified, by the performance of actions and activities that purify the subtle body, we then become eligible to receive spiritual knowledge, which then enlightens us and takes us closer to God and closer to forgetting our ego. So therefore, we must understand what the subtle body is made of. Subtle body is a bundle of karmas, 
Subtle body is a bundle of vasanas or un inchoate, inexpressed, unconscious desires. The subtle body is also a bundle of sanskaras. So what do we mean by sanskara? By sanskara we mean the psychological impressions that we have in our subtle body as a result of the experiences that we have gone through. A child who is, let us say, born in a war zone, let us say a child who has grown up in Iraq or in Syria or in Ukraine, what kind of subtle body impressions will he have? He will have completely different subtle body impressions or sanskaras than a person who has grown up in peace, in joy, in prosperity, in a temple, receiving the sacraments. All this makes the difference between one person and another. So you might well ask, is it the child's fault that he is born there? And the answer we have already covered when we did the law of karma. We get what impressions we create within our subtle bodies in this life. The impressions we create in our mind in this life are the impressions we carry with us to the next life. And just like at one time there was, you know, there used to be a competition made for each other. Will's cigarette and Will's filter. The cigarette and filter were made for each other and they had a made for each other competition where a couple would be awarded this made for each other prize. So also, as you make your mind in this life, as you make your intelligence in this life, as you make your sense of self in this life, this determines the kind of gross body that you get. This determines the gross body you get. Therefore, it's very important for us to create positive impressions on the subtle body. And if you are a parent, if you are a grandparent, it is important for you to make sure that you leave positive impressions, divine impressions in the minds of your children, your wards, your charges, and the people whose responsibility you've taken. And it is in this sense that we actually talk about sanskaras. A person who is a devotee of Krishna, who is actually offering everything to him in a spirit of devotion and renunciation, every action is being done with the idea Om Tat Sat. Such a person who is completely self-sacrificed in his life to God, such a person is having a continuous sanskara which is purifying him. There is no need for him to perform any sanskaras. But we are not like that. We have not yet reached that stage where every second of the 24 hours, we are constantly absorbed in God, negating the sense of self. And therefore, it is very important that we perform yajna. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Yagya dana tapa karma na tyajam karyam evatat, yagya jnana tapa karma pavanani manishina. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that three activities, three types of activities must never be given up the acts of sacrifice, the acts of giving, and the acts of austerity. Therefore, when we observe acts of sacrifice, giving, and the acts of austerity, even great souls 
Krishna says, even great souls are purified. Pavanani Manishina. And therefore, these activities can never ever be given up. So therefore, the scriptures recommend that to shape our subtle body, to impress upon our subtle body, to create psychological impressions which later will bear fruit in your spiritual progress. We need to perform what is known as sanskara. So while sanskara as a generic term could mean all impressions that you have gathered, because after all, a child who is suckling on his mother's hip in a bar and living in a brothel will also have his own sanskaras. But those are not the sanskaras I speak of. I speak of those sanskaras which are destined and which are designed to actually bring about purification of the subtle body so that the soul is prepared for reunion with God. So when you purify your subtle body, when you extinguish, annihilate, transcend, or prepare for transcending, annihilating, or extinguishing this ego or sense of self, the soul becomes ready to reunite with God. Because sanskaras are means by which at regular important milestones in your life, you are made to remember God and forget your sense of self. While each of these sanskaras obviously are performed for certain fruit, or at least overtly, have been described to bear certain fruit. The devotee of the Lord performs these sanskaras without seeking fruit, but as a duty, in a spirit of sacrifice, so that he may remember God and come closer to him by forgetting the sense of self. So we have in our culture and in our religion, various types of sanskaras. And these sanskaras are not just there in Sanatana Dharma, but these sanskaras are also there in some form or the other in every single religion. So whether if you're a Parsi, you will experience a Navjot ceremony and other ceremonies. If you're a, a Catholic, you will go through what we call as a first communion, and so on and so forth, you will also experience other sanskaras that are there in your religion. So therefore, every religion has sanskaras. The only thing is that in Vedic religion, these sanskaras are very clearly laid down. And not only are they laid down, they're described in great detail. And there are a huge number of them. And if you should perform these for yourself, and of course, for the people who are your children, your grandchildren, your wards, your charges, then certainly you will gain great merit and you will purify yourself as well while preparing the next generation for attaining union with God. In fact, the Gautama Dharma Sutra enumerates that there are 40 outer karma sanskaras and there are eight inner karma sanskaras. And they help you. If you perform these sanskaras in the right spirit, they help you to attain union with God. And the purpose of these sanskaras is to inculcate or create, develop, virtues and in this tradition they are there to help the individual to constantly evolve and perfect themselves on the human journey of life the eight inner sanskaras
described by Gautam Dharma Sutra are more important than the 40 external sanskaras. Because ultimately the aim of all sanskaras is to develop these inner sanskaras. So what are the eight inner sanskaras? The inner sanskaras are compassion towards all living entities, patience, absence of envy and hatred, purity, tranquility, having a positive disposition, being generous, not being possessive. So if you lack these eight sanskaras, you do not attain union with God. But a person who may have performed only a few of these sanskaras, but possesses all these eight virtues, is sure to attain union with God. So says the Gautama Dharma Sutra. So this, these 40 sanskaras described in the Shastras, right, in Gautama Dharma Sutra, are Garbhadhana, Umsavana, Simantoyana, Jata Karman, Nama Karman, Anaprasna, Chaulam, Upanayanam. The four vows associated with Vedic study, gra the graduation ritual at the conclusion of the school, marriage, the five sacrifices to the gods, the ancestors, the humans, the spirits, and to the rishis. So, Similarly, there are seven remembrances and charities using cooked food in the form of ancestral offerings, seven remembrances and sacrifices in the presence of a yajna to mark harvest seasons and deities, and seven kinds of soma sacrifices like Agnishtoma, Atyagnishtoma, Utkaya, Sodashin, Vajpaya, Atiratra, Aptar, Aptar Yama. But more important than all these 40 is the ability to have compassion, patience, absence of envy or hatred, purity of thought, speech and body, inner calm and peace, positive attitude, generosity and lack of possessiveness. But if you find 40 sanskaras are too much, there are described elsewhere in the Griya Sutras, in the Kalpa Shastras, 16 sanskaras. And these 16 sanskaras are referred to as the Shodasi sanskaras. So it starts from before you are born. Before you are born, the pious parent, pious parents, the father and the mother, will pray and perform the sanskara, praying to God to have a child, a divine child. And this divine child, healthy child, blessed child, may transform the lives of the family and the ancestors. So this is called the Garbhadhana sanskara. Thereafter, there is called the Pumsavana sacrifice, where in performing the Pumsavana sacrifice, the, you perform it in the first third month of pregnancy, usually just before the fetus starts moving in the womb, and it is done to get a healthy child, and so on and so forth. These are the overt reasons why it is performed, but while these are the overt reasons for which it is performed, the actual reason for which it is performed is that the external action makes sacred those who participate in it by remembering God and forgetting self, whether it is being done at the Garbhadana or the Pumsavana or the Semontayana, which is performed later than pregnancy, or whether it is performed at Jata Karma, which is at birth, or it is Nama Karana. The whole idea is to leave psychological impressions of divinity in the mind of the individual and the people around. So there are many of these ceremonies which are described. So, you know, there's a Nishkramana when the first time the child is taken out. 
when the first time the child is given solid food there is anna prashna when the child's hair is cut there is a chuda karana there is a karna veda which is when the ears are being pierced and when it begins study it is called vidyaramba and thus there are 16 sanskaras which go on right up till antyeshti which is finally at the conclusion of life the ceremony is performed to sacrifice the body which has been left behind so this is the purpose for which sanskaras are performed in the bhagavad gita very clearly krishna points out and in the chapter 4 krishna points out there are various yagyas that are performed all of these yagyas are meant for the purpose of remembering god and forgetting self so krishna points out dravya yagna stapo yagno yoga yagna tatha pare swadhyaya gnana yagna cha yata yah samshita vratah some offer wealth as sacrifice others offer austerity as sacrifice some practice the eightfold path of yoga yet others study the scriptures and cultivate knowledge so all these are all forms of yagya yagya means to remember god and forget self so all those sacrifices that you perform in a manner whereby you actually get absorbed in the spiritual or religious ceremony forgetting yourself and being absorbed in god and seeking to unite yourself with him such individuals experience what is known as yagya in the bhagavad gita krishna says that every act should be a yagya yatkaroshi yadashnasi yatjhosi dadasi yat yat tapasyasi kauntya tad purushva madarpanam whatever you do whatever you eat whatever you offer whatever you give away whatever charities whatever austerities you perform everything krishna says do it for me shubha ashubha phalare evam moksha se karma bandhane sanyasa yoga yukte na vimukto mane vaishyasi and krishna says when you perform these actions in a spirit of sacrifice and devotion to god in a spirit of renunciation and devotion you become purified and eventually come to me what happens to those who perform actions only for themselves krishna says in chapter 4 text 31 yagna shishtam rito bhujo yanti brahma sanatanam nayam loko asti yagnasya kuto anya kuru satyamah he says those who know the secrets of sacrifice and they engage in it they advance towards union with god whereas those who do not perform sacrifice find no happiness in this world nor in the next so this is very important whatever opportunities you get to perform sacrifice to remember god and forget self these help you to purify your subtle body and help to prepare you for union with god so if you are intelligent you will perform whatever is in your powers whatever is in your uh, capacity you should perform these ceremonies it's not necessary that you should ideally though call priests and have big ceremonies and spend a lot of money for each of these ceremonies but according to your means you should perform them the idea is not really how you perform the ceremonies the real importance of these yagyas or sanskaras is that you perform them and create the right attitude of mind 
that is why rather than donating something to have some puja performed in some temple far away which is better than nothing certainly is better than nothing it is far better if you perform these yagyas in your own home even if you have to perform it yourself today you have all arrangements you can go online and you can order i want to perform this sanskara and you will get a video tape or audio tape you will get all these kind of things to perform them and but even if you don't have them it doesn't matter if you have the right attitude of mind and you perform it with prayer with devotion with spirit of sacrifice in a spirit of renunciation in bringing about an atmosphere of tranquility peace piety god will bless you and your loved ones and all those who are connected with you so the best way of course which we are constantly recommending is that your whole life should be a sacrifice your whole life should be a yagya but some people especially those who are in the renounced order say there is no need to perform sanskaras i don't agree with them for them it might be fine because they have renounced the world they need not perform any sanskara but if you are living in the world the performance of these sanskaras not only has a purpose and function to purify you it also has a social function for example when you perform shraddh it is an occasion for you to meet with all your relatives who are descended from the same line of your family and thereby once a year at least you all gather together to appreciate and to pray for the well being of your ancestors so there are when you have an upanayanam ceremony you call you bring your child out into the world you and make him understand that spiritual life is the final purpose of everything even though you may be immersed in material activities spirituality must always be your core and this is a public declaration a public commitment by the boy towards religious life in front of all the relatives so there are social functions also social implications also in the performance of sanskaras therefore it is so important that we should perform all the sanskaras so with this i will conclude today's session if you have any queries questions comments please feel free to ask me uh, yes good morning sir uh, i'll start with our first question so how one can initiate to uh, change its sanskars by performing these sanskaras you will initiate and you will transform the impressions that are there within your subtle body sure sir so uh, so how one can come to the realization that their sanskars need to be changed because a lot of people do not have the realization whether they are supposed to change them or not well what can i say if people don't think their sanskaras need to be changed well good for them let them continue whatever they are doing i already told you asuram yone mapanam mudo janmani janmani may they have this birth as fools birth after birth exactly so with that moving to another question so if they attend if they attend satsang if they hear the words of wisdom from the bhagavad gita or other texts they will hopefully become more enlightened it is said ध्यानेन आत्मनि पश्यन्ति केचिद आत्मनाम आत्मन अन्ये च सांख्येन योगेन कर्म योगेन चापरे अन्ये तो एव मजनंता श्रुत्वान अभ्यो उपासते ते अपि अति तिरंते एव मृत्युं श्रुतिं परायण दैट सम रियलाइज गॉड बाय मेडिटेशन सम डू इट थ्रू नॉलेज सम डू इट बाय वर्किंग इन अ स्पिरिट ऑफ डिवोशन रिनंसिएशन and then there are others who are unable to do all these things who are probably ignorant as you pointed out that their sanskaras need to change simply by hearing about god absolutely through satsang through lectures through 
various means they can cross beyond this cycle of birth and death absolutely sir so. so sir should i move to another question yes yes sir so can we call changing the rajas and tamas sanskars into sata sanskars as yagya as yagya so can that's it so how yagya? do you change from how do you switch gears from one sanskara to another sanskara the performance of different sanskaras bring about a transformation and a reordering of the uh, gunas that are there inside of you so if you are used to going to the bar every evening if you are used to going to the gambling den every evening then you have to stop doing that and not only stop doing that then when you perform sanskaras fresh sanskaras will be instilled in you and hopefully you will move from tamagun to satvagun absolutely so so that uh, so today's last question so nowadays uh, ego uh, has overcome everyone almost everyone so one is so absorbed by their ego that they do not uh, have the realization that uh, why and how they need to sacrifice Or, can't understand what you're saying so i'm saying that a lot of people are so absorbed by their ego and uh, they do not uh, understand the importance of sacrifice so how they can get to know that why the sacrifice is important so really they will experience suffering and through suffering they will come to the realization that they need to change pre buddha said that spiritual life cannot even begin until you realize that the essence of life is suffering so krishna says that birth and death old age and disease fault and misfortune and happiness they guarantee to everyone sooner or later they will meet across these things and when they meet these things and they suffer then they will realize that there is a need to learn a way to transcend suffering absolutely so 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 that was these were the questions uh, for today's session and uh, thank you so much for the session for today and uh, we will see you next week so okay hari om jai shri krishna hari krishna hari om sir thank you so much <laughs>